I'd like to talk about radiative transitions in semiconductors. In order to design, fabricate, and operate light-emitting devices, we need electrons and holes to combine radiatively. This means when an electron and a hole recombine, the extra energy goes into emission of a photon. So what you're looking at here is you're looking at a diagram of all the different ways you can get electronic transitions in a semiconductor between an electron and a hole. And so some of them actually favor light emission, these ones bracketed by one. But then here, you're actually recombining from a defect to the band edge. And so it's much more unlikely that you'll get light emission. So these are some of the processes we'll consider. The next thing we need to talk about is the difference between direct and indirect band gap materials. A direct band gap is shown here, where the minimum of the conduction band and K space aligns with the maximum of the valence band. In this case, these types of materials are very, very good for light emission. And the reason is because a photon has very, very little momentum, and so it likes to undergo a vertical transition on the K space diagram. At the bottom, you see an example of essentially an indirect band gap material such as silicon. And you can see here in K space, the minimum of the conduction band does not align with the maximum of the valence band. And so essentially, this makes it really, really hard to get light emission because now, in addition to the electron and the hole, you also need a phonon. And so your light emission has now gone from a first order process in the case of direct band gap to a second order process in the case of indirect band gap. We can think about detectors. There are lots of optical detectors made out of silicon, but it turns out if you look at the absorption coefficient versus the energy, for gallium arsenide, which is direct, you'll still do better in terms of absorption coefficient for the reason that the band gap is direct. Finally, the last topic is to look at radiative efficiency. So essentially, when carriers recombine, they can either recombine radiatively, which is represented by this tau r, it's the lifetime, the radiative lifetime for a carrier, and tau n r, which is non-radiative recombination. And so if your lifetime for your non-radiative recombination is really, really short, then it will be very hard to design a device which, uh, which has good light emission characteristics. And that's what you see here. As the radiative recombination time becomes really, really short, essentially we can't get light out of our devices.